Thank you for joining today's discussion on the investment potential in semiconductors. My name is Tammy Cash, and it's my pleasure to join you today to shed some light on what semiconductors are, how they're used, and why investors might consider the Horizons Global Semiconductor Index ETF, ticker symbol CHPS. Let's begin with a definition of semiconductors. Semiconductors are an essential component in the development of emerging technology, enabling significant advancements in computing, communication, transportation, banking and finance, clean energy, and numerous other areas. They're the core components of microprocessor chips as well as transistors, which in turn are key technologies associated with anything that is computerized or uses radio waves. Typically, when investors are referring to semiconductors as an industry, they're referring to companies that make microchip processors or the components they're composed of. Additionally, the use of central processing units or CPUs and graphics processing units, GPUs, have become a key piece of technology for enabling smart devices as well as general uh, digital and physical integration of the world around us. So how are semiconductors used? Chips and microprocessors have an almost limitless number of uses. Since they're effectively the central piece of hardware powering most of the electronics we use today. This includes prominent investor themes like the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, automobiles, cryptocurrency, and gaming. Let's move into the Internet of Things. Wi-Fi enabled devices with extensive processing power are needed to make our household devices smart. This includes an expansion of key consumer products, such as smart household appliances like fridges and stoves, and consumer electronic devices like flat screen televisions and smart hub devices like Google Home, Alexa, and our thermostats. As this slide highlights, there is growth projected in the market size of the global Internet of Things from 2020 to 2025, with the demand for smart household products and electronics uh, also expected to continue to grow. Let's explore artificial intelligence. Graphics processing units are necessary for the development of artificial intelligence and the algorithms they need to create the use in machine learning. As AI usage expands, which according to IDC's February 2021 report, is already at a whopping $500 billion industry, GPUs are the central piece of hardware tech used to help their expansion. A GPU is also a central component for any device that utilizes any sort of AI framework such as creating user experiences. These include smart TVs and automobiles as two large users of the technology. Similarly, as you can see, it's predicted that by 2024, the market for AI is expected to break the $5 billion, $500 billion mark with a five-year compound annual growth rate of more than 17%, 17.5. Let's now move to automobiles and autonomous vehicles. One of the largest growth areas for the use of GPUs is vehicles. The recent shortage in GPUs has put their prominence in automobile production front and center. As vehicles remain at assembly production facilities, unfortunately unable to ship due to the need for GPU integration. The semiconductor shortage is significantly impacting profit potential for automakers, and it could potentially cost them $100 billion in lost revenues this year alone, according to a report by accounting firm KPMG. The $100 billion in lost revenue is taken away from the approximately $2.1 trillion the automotive market was expected to make in 2021, compared to to its revenues of $1.65 trillion in 2020. Let's now move to cryptocurrencies. Due to the algorithmic nature of cryptocurrency mining and usage, 
The application-specific integrated circuit processors, sometimes referred to as ASICs and GPUs, are the key technology component. Think of these as the shovel in mining and using cryptocurrencies. The rapid rise in crypto mining in 2020 has only further exacerbated the semiconductor shortage, resulting in huge consumer demand for NVIDIA GPUs and dynamic random access memory, sometimes called DRAM processors. The latter of which is now 60% more expensive in the last 12 months, uh, ending March 31st, according to the deep dive. Now let's pivot to something we're all familiar with, gaming. <laughs> GPUs are again the key component for any type of gaming, video gaming uh, system. You simply can't use any gaming console or PC cloud gaming portal without an integrated GPU. For example, both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X consoles use a customized version of the AMD Zen 2 processor. Global supply shortages on the foundry components have trickled down, resulting in higher prices and limited inventory for both of those consoles. Now let's move on to the growing demand. The following chart illustrates the rapid growth in demand for semiconductors over the past decade, as smartphone usage and computing power has surged. As you can see, there's a spike in chips built for computing and wireless communications. In fact, there's been a 5.4% boost in semiconductor sales during the COVID based shelter in place demand for home gadgets. Now let's move on to the funds index. The index is the selective capped global semiconductor index. It's designed to provide exposure to the performance of these global publicly listed equity securities of companies engaged in the development or production of semiconductors and semiconductor equipment. The index will hold the 50 largest globally listed issuers. These will exclude China's uh, Chinese listed A share issuers as determined using a capped float market capitalization methodology. So stocks with the largest market cap will receive a higher index weighting in proportion to the other constituents in the index. So the index includes an index weighting cap so that no constituent issuer can exceed 10% of the index portfolio at the time of any given rebalance. And the index is rebalanced on a quarterly basis. Publicly listed equity securities, excluding those A-share securities listed on the Shenzhen and Shanghai Connect exchanges of companies that meet the inclusion requirements, such as having a minimum market cap of 1 billion US dollars that derive a substantial revenue from the production or development of semiconductors or semiconductor equipment, and which meets certain other requirements will be eligible for inclusion. So why is global exposure ultimately important for this sector? By market cap, the index had about 65% exposure to the US and another 20% to Asia, with the remainder to Europe at the time that chips launched. There are no major Canadian semiconductor companies, meaning that a heavy Canadian equity portfolio has almost no exposure to this sector. Much of the interest in the sector tends to heavily focus on the processor manufacturers, such as NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD, names I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Despite being a massive sector from a revenue perspective, Production upstream on foundry and basic components is tightly controlled by a few massive companies, predominantly based in Asia. Investors who invest in semiconductors, who focus purely on chipset makers, really miss the potential for a more, more lucrative opportunity in getting exposure to the revenue leverage that the upstream component manufacturers get from effectively controlling the supply. While semiconductors are not a commodity, the sector almost functions as a commodity style sector, given the constrained production of key components. According to Bloomberg Intelligence, 
just three or four foundries now account for the majority of global chip fabrication. 91% of the contract chip making business is housed within Asia, most of which is divided between just two regions, Taiwan and South Korea. Home to Taiwan Semiconductor, TSMC, and Samsung, respectively. Chips should provide a diversified access to the largest companies in the sector, both in the North American region and in key regions of Asia and Europe. Here are some key features of chips. Chips is Canada's first semiconductor ETF with direct exposure to potentially the single most important technology hardware sector. Uh, the exposure is global. CHIPS provides global exposure to the world's leaders, including large Asian, Asian foundry manufacturers. And of course, it's got a capped index exposure, which provides broad diversification to the sector. Uh, we believe it's ideal for Canadian investors. Canadian investors get access to U.S. currency hedged exposure, and they avoid the potential tax consequences of holding U.S. listed ETFs within the sector. Regardless of what happens with trends in consumer technology or changes in how we use technology, we can be fairly certain that technology will be powered by semiconductors. Semiconductors are really at the core of technology usage. So chips could be considered a potential core long-term position in a technology portfolio as a way to get exposure without necessarily worrying about what the next latest and greatest technology craze is. Because more than likely, some form of semiconductor will be powering that technology. I wanna thank you for joining today's discussion. If you like what you've heard today, please reach out to us on social media and follow us for more educational content.